Al Codillo, and I'm here with Alexander Jenny from GoPro Color. <laughs> or is it just still Color and GoPro? <laughs> How is that whole thing working out, uh, Alexander? So was, you know, where, where does it all fit in the infrastructure? And what are you guys taking care of in France? So, uh, we are a division of uh, GoPro. That's the easiest way to put it on. So, we are in charge of many parts around the Fusion camera. Uh, in fact, all the, the desktop uh, algorithm and the desktop software, so Fusion Studio, that's, by, that's was done by my team. That's not only the, soft, uh, the only software we do. We do a, a lot of other surrounding software, so all the color software, uh, Autopano, Autopano Video, Panotour, the GoPro VR player, which mm -hmm. is also something completely free, by the way. Uh, yes. But don't really know that it's free. I know, it's and it's a great play, and it's not, it's not only a great player for 360, it's a great 2D player as well, which most yes. people do not realize. Yes, and we put a lot of effort in that player, so it plays really well, high resolution, stuff like that, yes. but also it's something that is really used uh, in many different situations. Uh, why we need a player first to be able to prove the output of our software, sure. that's super simple, it's more a technical tool, but when we are on booth and we want to show something that somebody is seeing in the Oculus, uh, right. one of the stuff it's really great is that product. You can just look at a, a 360 in the Oculus, that the customer that come to the booth, right. but you can have a second screen. Yes. And that second screen is not the view of Oculus, meaning right. with, no, with two pictures, it's directly linear one. So meaning you can connect several display to the same sources. Right. And through that player, that's really great. We even have what we call the master slave system. Mm -hmm. Several computer. One is the master that, for example, has the Oculus, and all other will render exactly the same at the same time. So even could you, remotely, could you do it to different Oculus headsets at the same time? Then that way? No, because okay, uh, just uh, to uh, other uh, display devices. Uh, yes, okay. because uh, in that case, if you had two Oculus, meaning you will have two sets of uh, orientation. Ah, yes. And that's the problem. Yes, that's where you, because then you you're, have not, a, you're taking it away from the unified. Exactly. Okay. okay. But, so, that's GoPro VR Player, one, one of the products, a lot of other options there. I, mean, I use it sometimes with my 3D TV. Yes. And uh, if you have a, a 360 stereo, you can output the second screen. Yes. In fact, to yes. The, so the People can see the rectilinear in 3D on the TV. While yep. the, so that's also and works very well for it too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one technology I really we are really putting a lot of effort on it. It's open source. It's free. It's called Fort GS. Fort GS. So that's really not really known in the market. Yes. What is that all about? So it's a web framework. Okay. A web framework that allows you to really, if you're a bit a coder, a web coder, to be able to to put your uh, immersive content online okay. through the web. So it's based on really a strong uh, platform. It's 3GS, WebVR, okay. uh, WebGL, stuff like so that. So does it sit inside an HTML, HTML framework? Exactly, it's on okay. top of that. In fact, uh, it's based on the HTML5 specification. Okay, stuff very, like good. That. very good. It's in JavaScript uh, written, it's open source. And with that, people that are really just know just a little of coding can directly put their 360 content through the web in a way that is far more uh, up to date than the old technology that, that we are uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it, it it really built a bridge between two uh, different kind of VR. Yes. There is currently the VR that we all are talking about uh, with the fusion and immersive media VR. So right. that's about. 360 content, right? But there is the second VR. That's the VR that comes from the gaming industry. Yeah, polygonal based, the yep. uh, textures, stuff like that. And currently, there is no uh, solution for a middle, something in the middle. Yes, there's no so middle ground to things right now. Now, at this point. Uh, people are really using most of the time Unity because yeah. if Unity is really a big box of a lot of options, it's amazing how it's being built and how it's great. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't really work in the web platform. So, right. So th there is something right. broken it, it there. It really works just in an app situation. Exactly. If you think about Unity, you're thinking about creating an app. Whereas this is something that you can do a lot of the similar things with, with uh, GS for? So it's web-based. So meaning okay. you have a website. Right. 
now with the Oculus Go, for example, you can go, there is a browser there that is completely, uh, that works pretty well now with WebGL based uh, system. So mm -hmm. now it has been optimized by the platform, meaning uh, Facebook, or Pop Chrome, or Google, and all these right, people right. make sure that now, even in the headsets, everything uh, works well. Yes. That wasn't really the case, uh, I would say, one year ago. Definitely yeah. not two years ago. It was just uh, yeah. hacking stuff. <laughs> but now it, it starts to be mainstream. Yes. But a mainstream web in 360, that would be awesome. Because it would be. No, no application to uh, installation. You just go there, bam, you have your set. Uh, and that's really. Uh, what was missing, that technology to be able to do that, and that's 4GS. So, with 4GS, uh, I have not played with it yet. I did hear about it before, and that's I'm glad that you brought it up, because it's one thing that I was going to ask you about. But it is not a GUI-based system, so this is not as uh, easy for a consumer to work with. This is going to be something more where you're doing some, some real programming. Or at least some basic programming. It's not really, yes. it's not really difficult yeah. programming. No, uh, that's exactly uh, at the stage it is right now. Right. Because before you do uh, an editor on, on such technology, you first need the technology and to be right. able to, to build everything well. So it's really an engine right now, a framework engine. So developers can already start to. To look at those and build the amazing uh, experience. And because it's open source, anybody can step Free in and, and, exactly. and work with it. So that's the stage where it is. At some point, of course, we need a UI on top of that, a yes. graphical user interface. And in fact, we have one in our portfolio, it's called Panatour. Panatour yes. currently generates carrier panel. Right. So in the future, it might happen that we'll have a something that will look like Panatour, right? that could generate force. So meaning, you just drag and drop your... And your Panatour top. is, I mean, it is the industry standard when it comes to, I to, to, to so. you know. I mean, it is it is the word that everybody uses. They call them Panatours. Exactly. Because that's what everybody uses, you know. Yes, there are other competitors out there, but really none of them come close. It's, it has been, Panoto, we, we put a lot of thought uh, when we built that product. There has been a Panoto 1 and a Panoto 2. Mm -hmm. And the Panoto 2, we redesigned a lot of the way the workflow works internally. And mm -hmm. what we did really well at that time with the 2 is we thought about a, a marketplace. So everything behind the scene, in fact, it's pluggable. Right. And there are a lot of third party developers now that sell their Panatour plugin that enhance, in fact, the, the tool itself. It's happening now. We have probably 50 to 70 uh, developers that do new plugins. You just go there. I want a super extra floor plan that, that probably exists. New toolbar, new stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that works pretty well, and that system in Panatour works yes. pretty well. Very well. Now, um, it's care panel, but the technology that is still there, right. it's still really popular, works right. pretty well, but uh, it still has some uh, uh, issue with compatibility with the 3D world. Yes. So that that's why at some point we figure out, okay, care panel, we still support care panel really well with Panatour, but at some point we need something that needs to be more 3D based. Right. And that's really the reason why the, it was three years ago that we said we need four. We need to build that from scratch. So we can be here really web-based, care panel, here for GS between the two VR far, right. and here probably Unity, but we, we don't care about that. There are people that do that sure, far sure. better than us. But this is Why reinvent the wheel? Exactly, we won't. So uh, that's really the, the goal here. And at some point, yes, there will be a UI on top of 4, because that's exactly what the, sure. the market is waiting for.